in this video we're going to explore how we can use the data structures which is very powerful in charges together with the data labels because if you will combine them you will notice you get an error which is called an object object or it will show here an object object instead of the value and that might be frustrating so how can we do that well i'm going to show exactly how we're going to solve that specific issue and it's quite straightforward once you understand how it works in this video we're going to answer one of the viewers question which is how to use data labels plugin with the data structures in chart.js and those two together can give you a nice response however they don't work right away so let me show you first where this question came from this question came from my other video about how to create clickable bar charts with links in chart.js which is quite interesting as well then if we go down here we scroll down you can see here the question came from Daniel Leandro and I want to say a special thank you for Daniel for asking the question and this is what Daniel asks hi how can I do this with a data drawn from a constant PHP array like you did in your database course also is it normal that this method makes conflict with the data labels plugin it doesn't show me the numbers just object twice so let me click on that thank you for your videos they are very helpful first of all thank you and I'm happy you are uh, happy with the videos and that they're helpful. And next, we're going to look at this here. Because basically there are two questions in one. How do we have the uh, data, lo da data labels plugin connected with data structures? And then we have here the PHP array uh, concept. This I will skip for now. Because uh, the, probably the reason why it doesn't work, it's in here. And if you just have a constant or an array that you put into a constant, it should work fine. The issue here is not the PHP or the constant that has been converted into a, uh, or has been parsed into JavaScript readable arrays. So that's not the issue. This is here the issue because you're going to use data structures. All right, very important. Let's start to create it first, and then I'm going to explain to you why. We have this here. Next, first of all, uh, let's go to the chargesstree.com uh, website, getting started, and here we just get the default code here i'm going to copy this chunk of code and what i will do if you want to understand what it what this code does please check out this specific video paste this in here once i paste this in here i want to cut out the title here and this is basically for me so i know what's the title of the video we we'll paste that in there all right so we have this here now it's time to add up the data labels plugin to do this we need to have here a few items first of all we need to put in here the script here we have the data labels uh, or the charge as data labels plugin script so that's this one here if you go on uh, cdnjs.com you search for the charges dash plugins dash data labels or you know, basically this one here if you search for this you'll find and the latest version is this one that supports charges tree which is 2.0.0 all right so i'm going to copy the script here just click on that one i'll copy that and i have to make sure that this loads after charge yes why this has or this plugin script basically has certain dependencies that are based in here in the charge yes that needs to load first all right very important so now you have this one here and if you save this you will see nothing happens yet it's time to activate this so to activate this what we need to do here in the options we're going to put in here comma this is for the options oh sorry i have to make sure where's the options bracket that's this one here all right so then we can say here um plugins and bracket and then we say here the plugins name so what is the plugins name here it's chart data labels all right so once we have this basically we can use this one here we are we have this here and then we can start to activate it. So this plugin here, it's called like this, including this uh, capitalized C, capitalized D, capitalized L. All right. So now we have this here. What I want to do now is I want to activate this plugin here. So we can just activate this in here. After the skills, we put a comma here. And then we say here, plugins. All right. And then in here, we're going to say which plugin we want. Well, it's data labels like this. All right. And then here we could put in certain values all right so here we basically indicate that this has been activated and now if we refresh it i think even without this it probably would be because we have initialized it here or activated it here registered that's the right term you can see it here. 
All right. So we have this here, but we will be needing this as well. All right. So now we have this here, and of course this does nothing yet. So what we're going to do next here is basically add up the data structure. So data structure is very powerful. You can do really a lot with it, but you need to understand what data structures really does into the object here. Basically, it breaks the object, and you already figured out this one here is dependent on the default object of data. And the moment you break this object, you create a new object, you say this object is not the one you want to read, then you get an issue of object object. It doesn't understand exactly what it needs to do. It doesn't understand where to grab the value. So let me start to work with it. We're going to create something first so you will understand the structure of it. All right. I'm going to comment this out. You say this data here will be obsolete. I'm going to create a new data object. Basically it's the data. But in here, we're going to say we have this nice data structure where we have a category. And this category could be anything. Let's say we have different departments. Let's say IT department, all right? And the ID, IT department. And then we have here the sales records, which is in another object we can call value, for example. I'm just giving it certain things. And you can say, yeah, we made $100 out of this department. All right, comma. Let's put in a few other items here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this. Uh, well, let's say six, seven. We, we need to have in total seven items. All right, so seven with this here. So the IT, well, what we can have here, let's say this is the uh, food, fruit. Uh, I'm just making stuff up here. Tree, uh, PC, clothes. And finally, we have uh, drinks. That's all right. So here we put in value two, three, four, five, six. That should be six and seven. All right. So we have this default. We can remove this comma here. It's an obsolete for now because this is the uh, item we need. All right. If I save this right now, nothing will happen, or at least, well, nothing will happen. Well, something happens, but of course, it breaks it all because. There is now a completely new structure going on here. Plus, I realized we got an error here of 69. Number 69 is here. Comma here, we forgot about that one. Let's see here, it should have, there you are. So you can see here, but you can see it says your object, object. That's already probably your issue. All right, so let's start to work with the next part here because we need to register the data labels now. Basically, what is going to happen is our labels here, this is basically the lower part here, should be replaced with the categories. All right, so this is now our X scale. And this here will be our Y scale, and specifically this one here that will be in the sales and then dot value. So we're going to say here, we have the scales here, and then what we're going to say, well, we don't have to go in the scales, we say options. And in the options here, we're going to say parsing. So we're going to make something readable, parse, to parse or parsing, Basically, parse means make something readable for. So we're going to make it readable for our JavaScript code here. We need to have this object, but this object that we just created has no meaning yet. So we're going to make that readable now. So we say here's the following. So how will we make it readable? We're going to assign this item here correctly. So we're going to grab this here. We say this, then we say here, this will be the X axis key, all right? And what is the x axis key? It is called category. Why? Because this is eventually our category, and then we can hide the labels. All right, next part. Y axis, you already figured out, we have the same thing here, except here, we're not only in the data or in the sales part, but we're on the sales.value. All right, sales.value. So we created a new structure here. So if I refresh you now, it works, but we get the object object. This is the e reason why. It doesn't know where to grab the sales.value because it doesn't recognize this by default. Remember, this, this um, uh, what is that, the plugin? The plugin JavaScript library, which is this one here, the data labels plugin, will have a default setting of grabbing it on the Y value, which is basically this one here. And this is now obsolete because it just doesn't have any meaning now for us, right? So 
now we have a different normally it was expecting the y and now it says okay i don't know where to find the value so how do we solve this to solve this i have a video about that basically here if you are going into the data labels item here it's called formatter uh where are we somewhere here formatter and that's the one you need to use. i would highly recommend you to check out this entire series but that's the one we're going to use here so let's look at the formatter. So we're going here to ChartJS, the, the, the official website of the ChartJS plugin data labels, which is quite a mouthful to say. So we're going to click on that. And what we're going to do here is the following. We're going to look for the formatter. And basically in the formatter, you can see here, this is the code we will be needing. All right, we're going to grab formatter. And basically here, let's start. What we're going to do with the object object, we're going to say your formatter and then column. And create a function, and in this function, we're going to grab two items, which is the value and the context. And basically, value might not be even necessary, but that's all right, just in case. So, what are we going to do here? Well, first of all, to understand what we're doing here, we must understand what is context, because that's the one we're going to work with. So, I'm going to do a console log context, refresh here, and now you can see here we're getting all of these data here. Right now, it grabs the data from the default and it doesn't exist and it has a confusion so what we need really is basically in here we have to look here somewhere deep probably we have to go uh, in the chart and in the chart we're going into the data let's search here the data uh, letter D Do we have that there is none at all the data set is it what were you expecting I was expecting it in the chart I do have my notes here do I skip something ctx data legend no all right data set we have the data here oh that's maybe it's in here eventually this is the one we have to work it's probably it's this one here i don't know how i get my notes here but apparently my notes was not 100 percent accurate but it's in the data sets and from the data sets we go into the data here and then we can pinpoint the item here all right so to do this I'll have to show you again. Let's refresh. When we hover over this, you can see here we get a target. All right. So what I want to do here first, let's go and do some practice and grab here the data uh, data index because that's the one we will be needing anyway. So if I do this and refresh, you can see we get now only the indexes, and this is on the x scale. All right. So if I hover over this one, this is, should be index one, two, and this index zero. All right. So this is correct here. So if we have this here, and we can also grab the same one, what I need is I need two items here, especially if you have two data sets here, then you will have these items. So what is the other term? If I'm not mistaken, it's index data set, but let's confirm. Let me confirm that just to be sure. We go in here, we have the data index, all right, and we have the data set index. All right, that's the one we need. So we have this as well. All right, so we get all of these. This is important because with this, we can now start to work on the final items to extract the exact value or to pinpoint to the exact data set and exact array value in here. So what we're going to do here, the last item, I'll do one more console log because I want to grab here now the item where we started with. So I'm going to hide these two for now. And then we're going to refresh again. All right, I'm going to open up here or let me hover over one and we can see it. Let's open up here. Then let's go into chart. I, I know it was in the chart, and then we go somewhere into data sets, somewhere at the bottom here. Or was it at the chart data sets? Um, let me double check here. If I go into chart, if I close this, we can just go immediately to the data set, which is far more easier. All right, so we can go to data sets immediately, and let's see if we can find here the data. There we are, we have the data here, and then we get all of these items here. We go into sales, we go into value. All right. If I hover over it here and you stay still for a few seconds, you can see that you get the tooltip. Dataset.data0sales.value. All right, that's the one we need. So we're going to grab data set. So we say here dot data set dot data dot sales dot value. And let's be one more time checking. Let's check this one more time. I expect it here the data set and then all right the data is equal to zero all right so that would be data is zero all right i'm expecting here data set 
uh, index number, but apparently that's not necessary. Well, let's confirm. You can see here. All right. We have this hard code on zero, so that's why you always get this value here. So we remember we had this one here, the index. I'm going to copy this, paste it in here, and now refresh. There we are. So now we get this here. So we can now start to do the final item here. Apparently, this one here was not even necessary. But this is what we're going to do. We say here we will return the value, and the value is straightforward this one here. Uh, cut this all out or copy that, paste it in here, save and refresh. Let's double check. All right, we get the values here nicely. So, would we have a problem if we would have another data set? Well, let's check. We can confirm this by just duplicating this entire data set, copy, comma, paste, save, refresh. So now we have them, and now everything works fine here. And let's be really certain by just giving it some random numbers. 9, and this is 12, 15, 18, and 21. Save, refresh. There we are. So now you connected them together. And this is very important. So basically, the reason why you struggle, or why you had the object, it's very simple. We had created a new object where we want to grab the data. And this, or basically the structure it was normally, has become obsolete. And because of that, the standard, what this JavaScript works with, what this JavaScript uh, code works with in the data labels is now not officially the place where we get the data. So we have to reassign the location of that. That's what we did here. And that's basically the answer. Your, your issue is definitely not your PHP array constant. Absolutely not. It's just this connection here. All right. So this should be the answer here. If ever you want to understand even more, I would say check out the data structure video here. This one is always useful to learn because this is the basics of it. But uh, next, if you want to understand and dive deep into the uh, the Chart.js plugin for data labels, please check out my series. I have a series here with 18 videos. It covers everything you need to know, including this basically. So if you have any other questions, you can always put them in the comment section below.